Hello, this is Tom Clendon, your online ACCA SBR lecturer. If you want to find out more details about my courses, just go to my website at www.tomclendon.co.uk. But the subject of this podcast is how we account for financial assets, which is covered in IFRS 9 financial instruments. And this was a topic that was suggested to me by my followers on my LinkedIn account. So where do we start? I want to start at the beginning. I want to make it simple. Well, as simple as possible. Uh, when it comes to financial instruments, maybe things are, are never quite simple. If we're going to be talking about financial assets, then we need to remind ourselves that assets are good things. Assets are debits. Assets are things that we control and that are going to give us some future economic benefits. Now, there's lots of different types of assets. Sometimes they're tangible, PPE. Um, but what we're talking about is financial assets. And financial assets come about because of a financial instrument. And there is a definition of a financial instrument. It's a, it's a contract that creates a financial asset in one entity and a financial liability or equity instrument in another. So this podcast is not going to talk about loans and creditors and payables and equity shares that we've issued. Instead, it's going to concentrate on the asset side of things. So examples of financial assets include when we buy shares, we subscribe to shares. So we've made an investment. So we have the asset. We're not issuing the shares. We're buying the shares. So we have an asset. Or we lend money to somebody. So we invest in their debentures. We're a lender. So they owe us money. They have a liability, but we have an asset because we're the lender and therefore we earn interest on it. And of course, simple things like trade receivables and cash. So those are my four major types of financial assets. Investments in shares, equities. Investments in debentures and loans where we're the lender. Trade receivables and cash. Now, pulling back to the big picture, in financial reporting, you should be familiar with the idea of a mixed measurement system. In other words, we don't have an exclusive way of always measuring everything at cost, and we don't have an exclusive way of always measuring things at fair value. What we have in IFRS is a mixed measurement system. So sometimes things are at cost and sometimes things are at fair value. And that's true of financial assets. I mean, it, it, it's true of PPE as well. You know, if, if you buy an item of, of property, plant and equipment, you can either measure it at depreciated cost or you can revalue it. You have an accounting policy choice. Now, with financial assets, it's a little bit more complicated. And with financial assets, the way that mixed measurement system works is they can be at cost, they can be at fair value. And then those which are at fair value can be at fair value through P&L or can be at fair value through OCI. So it's very important that we get the classification of a financial asset correct. And if you're not sure, the default for accounting for financial assets is that it will be at fair value through P&L. So let me just repeat, there are three classifications of financial assets and the classifications describe the accounting treatment. The classifications are amortized cost, fair value through P&L and fair value through OCI. Now, the two fair value ones, I think, are the easiest to explain in that, it, in that 
you revalue them at the year end to their fair value. And if it's classified as fair value through P&L, you take the gain or loss of the P&L. And if it's classified as fair value through OCI, then you take the gain or loss to OCI, the gain or loss to other comprehensive income, so that it accumulates in equity in a reserve probably called other components of equity. So let's just make sure you're comfortable with amortized cost. You've probably come across this before because the way we account for lease liabilities, the way that we account for financial liabilities is at amortized cost. And in the context of a liability, amortized cost means that the liability every year changes for two reasons. Because with a liability, you've borrowed money the liability will go up with a finance cost that's charged to P&L because you've borrowed, so there's a cost, effective rate. But any money that you've paid back reduces the liability and therefore you have a balance at the year end. Now that's a liability and that's thinking about it from the perspective of the borrower. But for financial assets, we're thinking about things from the perspective of the lender. So therefore, it works in very, very similar way because the initial amount of the asset, the initial amount of the loan will go up when you charge somebody interest and will go down when that person repays you that money. But the key thing about amortized cost is the balance at the year end is the balance at the year end. It's not remeasured to fair value. OK. The first step in the process in the classification process is the SPPI test. The SPPI test, the cash flow test. Are the cash flows solely representing the payment of principal and interest? Solely the payment of principal and interest. In other words, is the financial asset a loan? Are we a lender? And therefore, are the cash flows that we're getting back, are they contractual? Because if I lend you money, I'm going to, under the contract of the loan, I'm going to specify when you pay me that money back, what date you pay me that money back, and the monies that you pay me back will be solely the payment, the repayment of the principal together with interest, which is compensating me, the lender, for the time value of money and the risk of default. So if we judge, if we feel that the cash flow test is met, if we feel that the financial asset, the payments are contractual, arise on a specific date and represent SPPI, solely the payment of principal and interest, if we say that it doesn't, if that's not the case, then the nature of the financial asset that we have is an equity instrument. We haven't made them a loan. Therefore, we must have effectively bought shares in that company. And what IFRS 9 says is if the cash flow test is failed, then it must be measured at fair value every year. The instrument must be measured at fair value every year. The asset must be measured at fair value every year. And the default is, of course, fair value through P&L. But there is an option. There is an irrevocable designation that you can make at initial recognition to classify and account for that financial asset at fair value through OCI. So if when you originally buy a small number of shares as a financial asset, it will fail the cash flow test. And if you want to avoid the fluctuating profits, if you want to avoid the gains and losses on that investment, passing through the P&L, causing your earnings per share to potentially yo-yo, you have the ability, you have the choice to designate it as fair value through OCI. And those gains and those losses will therefore bypass the P&L. They will be reported directly in OCI um, because you've designated it as fair value through OCI. Now, you can't change your mind. It is an irrevocable designation. So I suppose it's a little bit like getting a tattoo. 
Right. Now, the answer to the cash flow question, to the cash flow test, to the SPPI test, may be yes. And if it is yes, the cash flows that you're going to get are contractual, on specified dates, are solely the payment of principal and interest, and therefore we are a lender. And therefore we're accounting for it. Well, how we account for it depends upon our business model but it's a debt instrument. Now, business model, what do I mean by business model? Well, if we're going to lend money to somebody else, if we're going to buy an investment in their debentures and we are never, ever going to sell it, if our business model is that we're going to hold it and collect in the monies, we're just not interested in the fair value. It's irrelevant what the fair value is because we're never going to sell it. So on that basis, the accounting treatment would be at amortized cost. However, if your business model is that you may decide to sell the asset in the future, but you're not committed to, you're not, you know, you're not trade, you're not a trading item. If there's an opportunity to sell it and make a profit, you might do that then presumably the users would then want to be able to track the changes in the fair value. So if the business model is you're going to hold it, but you may sell it, the designation and accounting treatment is fair value through OCI. But if it's any other business model, in other words, perhaps if you're trading it, then the accounting treatment and the designation is fair value through P&L. So there you have it. You know, one of the things you might want to do is almost create your own little decision tree or vent, you know, decision tree, little um, little notes around how these financial assets uh, are accounted for. And before I wind up, I would just like to contrast how we account for financial assets with how we account for financial liabilities. For financial assets, the default is fair value through P&L. But for financial liabilities, the default is an amortized cost. Thank you very much for listening. Look, there's more to financial assets than I'm able to cover in a, you know, a 10 minute podcast here. I haven't talked about the um, fair value option, initial recognition of the of the costs and, and, and uh, impairment. But what I want to do with these podcasts is to keep them short, keep them simple, give you that understanding, yeah, give you that confirmation. If you want any further support or assistance, please reach out to me through LinkedIn, through my website, www.tomclendon.co.uk, or just WhatsApp me uh, on 07725 350793. I enjoy these podcasts. Please like them. Please subscribe to them. Please tell your friends. Thank you very much for listening.